Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Fan diddly tastic morning here. It's a fantastic morning to do some math and some calculus. Today we are going to do free response question number three from the 2008 AP Calculus AD practice exam. Thank you, College Board. Oh, oh my. We get to use a graphing calculator for this problem. Weird, because in other problems or other tests, we only get the graphing calculator for problems one and two on the free response question. But this one, we actually get the calculator for the first three problems. And speaking of graphing calculators, if you're in the market for one, people ask me all the time, and I tell them the TI-84 Plus CE, the color edition, I love it. I love graphing two different functions that are different colors and having them really stand out. Uh, I have a classroom set, but they're boring gray and yellow. Uh, descriptions, okay? Uh, look down there in the description and you will see links below for a slew of different colors. And yes, I have a personal one. It is the mint green one. I love it. Super cute, guys. You know what? Just like you. Let's do some math. Oh, so they decided to give us a table. I love tables. Anyways, number three reads, the temperature in degrees Celsius of an oven being heated is modeled by an increasing differential function H over time T, where T is measured in minutes. The table above gives the temperature as recorded every four minutes over a 16-minute period. 3A tells us, Use the data in the table to estimate the instantaneous rate at which the temperature of the oven is changing right at time 10. Show the computations that lead to your answer and indicate the units of measure. This means I better put a label on there, okay? Uh, show the computations. This is great. There's no explanation needed. And anytime they ask us, okay, anytime they ask us, to estimate. That means I can't come up with it exactly. I don't have an equation or anything. But instantaneous rate of change is derivative, or in our case, slope. Okay? So 10, if you will, would be right here. Okay? I can't find the slope at one point without the derivative in this case, or without taking the derivative of an equation. But I can estimate it. That's the key. And what am I going to do? I'm going to take the two points closest. And I'm going to kind of sandwich that, and I'm going to do a change in y over change in x. So you might see it written like f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. That's really change in y over change in x. Where y, okay, y is our h value, and x is our t. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll say, um, we'll call this y2 and x2, y1 and x1. Now keep in mind, this problem set, it's increasing. We should have a positive value. Okay, It is increasing, so it should not be negative. Okay, So we're going to take 80 minus 73. Okay, I'm taking 80 minus 73, putting that over 12 minus 8. What is that, 7 over 4? I mean, that's, it is a calculator problem. If you want to check that, you can. But 7 over 4, let's not forget, indicate units of measure. It is degrees Celsius. No, that looks just like OC. Degrees Celsius per time, which is in minutes. If you don't have that, you'll get that wrong because it specifically tells you to indicate units of measure. It tells you to show your work, which we did right here. And uh, 3A was a layup. That was easy. 3B, write an integral expression in terms of H for the average temperature of the oven between times t equals 0 and t equals 16. Then estimate the average temperature of the oven using a left Riemann's sum. That is basically LRAM. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
with four subintervals of equal length. Show the computations that lead to your answer. Perfect. So first of all, let's do this. In, uh, let's write this integral expression in terms of h for the average temperature. Uh, rule of thumb: Whenever they are asking you for the average value, we have temperature already. They want the average value of the temperature. Okay. Any time they want average value, I need to integrate what we're averaging. In this case, it's h of t dt. That's good because they want that in terms of h. It says right here in terms of h. Uh, I want that from 0 to 16, so lower bound 0, upper bound 16. But again, and I can't stress this enough, don't forget this because this will pop up. It will happen. Whenever they want the average value, this just sums everything up. But to make it an average, I need to multiply by 1 over the difference in my bounds. This right here is an integral. We just wrote an integral in terms of h, because we have h of t, for the average temperature of the oven between times 0 and t minutes. Perfect. Done. We're done with that first part. Okay? Second part. All right. Second part now, they want us to actually estimate the average temperature of the oven using an LRAM, left Riemann sum, with four subintervals of equal length. So if I look at my table they provided, it is already broken up into four rectangles, so to speak. And this is, I like to actually draw these rectangles for the sake of ease. My first rectangle, well, I will do this one in orange, okay? Goes from zero to four, okay? And I include the numbers. I go right through the numbers. The second one goes from four to eight. Okay, this is good. The next one goes from eight to 12. We're, okay, fantastic. And the last one goes from minute 12 to 16. So if you couldn't visualize your four rectangles, you got them right there right now. LRAM. How does LRAM work? LRAM means I take the left value, okay, of my rectangle. Notice I have two. I have the 65. I'm looking at my orange one and the 68. The left one is 65. So I'm going to start by writing 65. Plus, now our red rectangle, we have 68 and 73, of course, we want the left one, 68. Plus, and we're just going to go right down the line, the green rectangle, 73 and 80. Well, let's take the left one, 73. Plus, the blue rectangle, we have 80 and 90, of course. It's LRAM, so we're choosing the left, which is 80. Now, let's not forget, anytime I do LRAM, RRAM, MRAM, I got to multiply by the width of the rectangles. Some people call it the height. I call it the width. Okay, these all have a width of four. That's a distance of four. Okay, each and every one of them. So I can do this by just multiplying this times four. That will give me the area under the curve. So let me point something out here. In this blue integral that we set up, what I have written down will give me this part. I still need to multiply it by 1 over 16 minus 0. Okay? 1 over 16 minus 0. Now is when we're going to use our calculator. <clears throat> wow. Goodness gracious. The Super Bowl was last night. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, kids. I was up late and, you know, looking at my TV, rooting for my squares to hit, but, you know. Just wasn't in the stars for old Mr. Visco, the teacher. Here we go. <clears throat> so, turn this on. The first thing I'm going to do is put my fraction. And I'm going to put 1 over 16 minus 0. I'm going to multiply that times 4. And then put the sum of all my values that I had written down there. And we had 65 plus 68 plus 73 plus 80. And I think I got that right. Oh, my God. Why does that not seem right? 65, 68, 73, and 80. What is this? Uh, uh, one, four. Oh, it's in fraction form. That's what, duh, hello. I could leave it like that, I suppose. But I'm going to actually take 143 and divide it by 2. 
and we get 71.5. Okay, that that's looks a little bit better to me. Uh, but again, 143 over 2 is acceptable. But we got 71.5. Now that's the average what? I mean, we we don't have we're done. I'm not even going to worry about a label. Okay, I was about to go into this area where you know let's label it the average temperature of the oven between. I mean, it's temperature, so it'll be degrees Celsius. But they're not asking for that. So we're done with 3B. 3C. Is your approximation in Part B? Now, if you fast forwarded to C here, Part B, we got 71 point, that's a point, 5 degrees Celsius. You know what? Garbage. It looks like garbage. I'm not happy with the way I wrote that. Let's go here. It's because I got to go to the calligraphy pen, then I go purple. 71.5. That was our average from Part B. Much better. Okay. Is that approximation an underestimate or an overestimate for the average temperature? And give your reason. So for Part B, and I'm going to go back here for a second. We used LRAM. Okay. We used LRAM. It tells us left stream and sum. Let's keep that in mind. What else it tells us, and I'm going to go back one more to the beginning when they first gave us information. It also tells us that this is an increasing differential function. H is always increasing. So let's go back here. And let's start to analyze this thing right here. We need to figure out, is it an underestimate or overestimate? And give a reason for your answer. First of all, H of t is always increasing. Okay, so if I had a graph here, then sure I could plot the points, but I'm not going to go through the, the song and dance of plotting the points. And I had a graph, h would always be increasing, blah, blah, blah. There you go. This is h of t. All right? And from 0 to 16, 0, here's 6, well, we'll have to do 16 right here. Half of that is 8, half of that is 4. And right in between there is 12. Okay. There are our T values. Okay. H is increasing, and we used an LRAM. That means the left corner of each one of our rectangles is the one that actually touched our blue curve here, H of T. So our first one, which was orange, touched right there. Okay. Our second one. In part B, if you look at my, and if you go back, you, you see I color coordinated these columns up top here. Okay. The red one touched here. Okay. The green one touched here. Okay. I think you guys are kind of getting it. And the blue one, oh, I do blue on blue. Shame on me. Is here. So is this an underestimate or overestimate? Our estimate included all of these rectangles, this area under the curve. All right. But what it missed, okay, what it missed is this little area here and this purple highlight, that's still under the curve area that I didn't calculate because it's outside of my rectangles. So really the area that I calculated was less than the actual area. Okay? So that tells me right there, our estimate was an underestimate our approximation. So let's go ahead and answer this right now. And we are going to use uh, the words that they use. All right. Give a reason for your answer. First of all, let's state the answer. It's an under s, yep, s to mint. And how come? What's the reason? Since we used, I could say a left Riemann summer LRAM on a strictly increase. Did they say strictly or did they say, what do they say here? Modeled by an increasing differential function. So we'll just say that. On an increasing differentiable, I'm going to abbreviate here, function. And that's my reason. The function's increasing, and I use the LRAM. So it's an underestimate. This is a good question. This is a good question in terms of do you really understand what you're doing? 
okay? You're not doing math here. You're, you're really taking a look at the whole picture here. I like it. And it's easy to do. 3D, and this is the last part to free response question three. Are the data in the table consistent with or do they contradict the claim that the temperature of the oven is increasing at an increasing rate? Give a reason for your answer. Okay, this is going to be another easy one if you understand it. First of all, there are two things here that make this confusing. Number one, they're not asking us if H of T is increasing. They're not asking us if the temperature is increasing. I mean, I can see that right here. It's asking us if the rate of H of T is increasing. Okay, so that's what is H prime of T increasing. Okay, so that's what they mean when they say is the temperature of the oven is increasing at an increasing rate. If they didn't have this here, if this was gone, if they just said, is the temperature of the oven increasing, I could just look at my table and say, sure. It goes from 65 to 68 to 73. It just goes up. But the moment they say increasing at an increasing rate, okay, that means you need to take a look at the rate of H. Is it increasing or H prime being increasing? The second thing that makes this confusing is are the data. Anytime I see the word data, and this has nothing to do with math, more English, um, I want to say is the data. Are the data. That's weird, but data is the plural of data or data or data or data or is or are, depending if you're talking about one or more with the same one word, data or data, which gets said two times. Anyways, let's answer this problem. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to find the slope between these two, see what that is. Let's do that right now, okay? 68 minus 65 over 4 minus 0, that's 3 fourths. Okay. Now I'm going to find the slope between these two. I'm just going to keep on checking the slope and, and evaluate that, okay? So I've got 73 minus 68 over 8 minus 4. Oh my god, that's 5 over 4. All right. Okay. Now let's check this one. From 8 to 12, we got 80 minus 73 over 12 minus 8. All right, well, that's a 7 over 4. Okay. Okay, kids. And I'm going to do this last one in the black marker. And that's 90 minus 80 all over 16 minus 12. Well, that's 10 over 4. Okay, so let's... Let's write these down. It's something nice and orangey. Here we go. So my slope goes from 3 over 4 to 5 over 4 to 7 over 4 to 10 over 4. Yeah, with each jump, it gets bigger and bigger. Absolutely. So it is consistent. All right, it is consistent. So let's answer that question. Yes, it is consistent. Okay, and now give a reason. Okay, it's not because H is increasing. It's because the slope of H is increasing or H prime. Okay, so that's what I want to state. It is consistent. Since, and I guess I should put a comma here if I say since, more of that English stuff. Since the rate or derivative, I could say or slope if I really wanted to, but, uh, you know, whatever. Since the rate, derivative, or slope of H of T increases I'm just gonna say every four minutes because that's what they gave us on the table boom I gonna say increase I suppose I don't have to say every four minutes um, but we're done I mean 
just under 20 minutes. That included me going on one minute and 16 second rant to start this video and probably another minute and five second rant to end this video. We're done. You're great. You're a good person. You are smart in mathematics. And I foresee a five. A five for a score on your AP Calc exam. They say that in Italian, a cinque. A cinque. On your math exam, AP Calculus. You got this. Keep on watching videos. Uh, like the video. Comments. Maybe there's a test you want to see me do or a question you have. Or, uh, you know, hey, follow me on YouTube because that's the only way you get notifications when I put up future videos like free response question number four coming soon to a YouTube app near you. See ya. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell.